Everyone, we should be live here. Oh, hey, Matty, here live with the Switchio Network team. I'm here with Ivan Poon, the co-founder, along with the front end dev, Henry Chow. Sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. And Jack Yu, the UX designer for Switchio. Switchio Network is, uh, as they claim, the most advanced NEP5 decentralized exchange built for the NEO platform. We're going to have our standard 30 to 45 minute uh, interview segment followed by a 30 to 45 minute AMA segment. So I do apologize for the wait for your questions will be answered in a timely fashion. I just want to give Ivan a chance to essentially go over the platform and his experience and journey up into this point. Pro before we do that, I do want to let everyone know uh, that we're having a slight audio issues on the secondary end with Henry and Jack. So when we get into the AMA section, if there's any questions uh, that they need to answer, uh, we'll just pass over the microphone over to them. But in the meantime, I'm going to hand it over to Ivan uh, so he can give a brief description of the project and his background. So take it away, Ivan. Yeah, uh, very good to be here, Matty. Um, so Switcher Network, it's not just a, a decentralized exchange on the NEP platform. Um, rather, um, what we're really trying to do is to do a cross-chain or uh, multi-chain decentralized exchange, uh, which can which will encompass all the upcoming blockchains uh, such as uh, Qtum, Cardano, etc. So uh, for NEP5 and NEO, uh, we are already at a pretty um, final stage of testing. Um, and uh, we have been working on this since November. Uh, our we, once our token sale is done, we plan to launch uh, around April or before April. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so let's just get into the questions because I'm pretty excited to talk about a lot of this stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people have been waiting for a platform to be able to trade neo assets uh, through smart contracts in a trustless manner. Uh, and as you were saying, uh, cross-chain swaps and things of that nature, and we will get into that, as I know that um, you also have Qtum uh, built in, or you're building out a Qtum exchange as well, and I think later on going to be doing the atomic swaps uh, through Wanchain, but we'll get into that later. I do have some questions set up for that. Um, my first question, obviously, is in relation to your competitor, Nex. Uh, I keep hearing people telling me, oh, well, Nex is approved by the Neo Council, uh, and things of that nature. I kind of wanted to address that to you as a competitor to Next. Um, how does the Neo Council play into the listing process for uh, Neo platforms, especially <laughs> ones that uh, connect with Neo? Uh, and how does that apply to you, if at all? Right. So, uh, sorry, uh, let me remove something. Kind of distracting. Oh, can you also mute the other mic? Sorry. Yeah. So, no, mute, mute the speaker because I'm hearing feedback from myself. All right, sorry about that. So uh, regarding new, new council itself, um, I think how they market themselves is that um, the new blockchain, it's, it's actually supposed to be an open uh, sort of platform, even though it's, uh, I mean, there's a uh, high degree or quite a high degree of centralization uh, regarding the nodes currently. Um, but whether a project is endorsed by uh, new the new council itself, I don't think it really matters in terms of uh, whether the project succeeds or not. Um, yeah, so so I think it's more of a marketing uh, marketing kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so anyone anyone with the um, with the correct amount of gas can actually build their own smart contract, deploy on the new platform, and uh, that's uh, after all that's what. Um, the new council has been promoting that that uh, it's an open source uh, endeavor, the, the whole new ecosystem. Okay, so from your perspective, um, anyone who has enough gas can launch on the platform, and you and you have that that gas set aside. Correct. I don't see a difference uh, in the expect uh, between Ethereum and Neo. Like mm -hmm. projects that are not uh, endorsed by Ethereum Foundation are, are not given this question. Correct. So, so, so why is this question being posed to for for Neo in particular? Yeah, I think it's just becoming like uh, a common factoid right now in the industry um, that's related to Neo, and I think it's because of like you were saying the centralized nature of some some of the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Um, so I guess it's, I, in my opinion, it's a valid question, um, but I can I can understand you know the process is supposed to work a certain way, 
Uh, but if you're saying it's going to, then I think that's fine. That's acceptable enough. Um, so I want to kind of dive into the current options to be able to connect uh, in a decentralized manner to your platform. I saw that in the demo you're using JSON, um, you're using private keys. Is there anything in the works, like a, at least for Neo, in the near future for like a, like a MetaMask type integration? Uh, and will you be able to use Ledger in the future? Is there any plans for that with your platform? Right. So uh, for new for for the MetaMask angle, I, I believe that's uh, something called Neo Link. Uh, you can correct me later if I'm wrong. That's being developed similar to to MetaMask. Um, we we'll definitely support that. Uh, currently, the Neo Link is only available on testnet, um, but uh, we have we have looked at it. Uh, once it's ready, we will definitely implement it for for the for our front end, our UI uh, component as well. Regarding Ledger, it's a bit more complicated because uh, for browser based systems, you you need to implement this protocol called U two U two F, I believe. Uh, currently, the the new the new Ledger firmware or, or, or software uh, doesn't support uh, that protocol. Um, uh, once it does, we'll definitely implement it. But even before that, I believe that Chrome's new Web USB feature will allow us to to work around and use the use the normal HID USB protocol to to interact with the with the ledger. So yeah, definitely uh, both uh, both of them are on our roadmap. Um, the reason you might not see it is because, as, a, as I think, as a whole, the new ecosystems are slightly less mature than, say, Ethereum or or, or even even like Bitcoin. In fact, yeah. Gotcha. Um, when looking at some of the decentralized exchanges on Ethereum, uh, Ether Delta pretty much lists any coin right away, uh, and they also have a, a function to add a custom coin based on the address. I think IDEX has a little bit more control uh, over what they list along with Radar Relay. Uh, how is your listing process going to list and will you have custom token functionality as well? Um, well so once again, we, we want to have the custom adding kind of thing, uh, similar to Ether Delta or like on my Ether wallet where you can just key in the address, the contract hash and um, the decimals. Uh, the But we will not... We will probably not launch with that at the start. Uh, to to be frank, uh, there's two there's two reasons here. One is um, uh, we we want to we want to do a slow release for publicity purposes. The second more important reason is that uh, Neo does not virtualize the the different contracts. So, for example, when our contract is executing another contract, uh, that is not uh, separated in the VM. And so there might be a security issue there, etc. But I don't want to go into technical details. The, the, the main thing is that we will launch with a whitelist uh, once we are sure that um, uh, we, we can go, we can do without it. We have a function to destroy the whitelist, and then it's completely open. So, so that's our that's our plan currently. Yeah, I did want to comment. Uh, I did want to follow up a question in regards to whitelist. Um, some of the attractions of the decentralized exchanges is that there's no limits or interference with centralized entities. Uh, one portion of your whitelist uh, talks about having a plan for KYC and AML uh, through the implementation of the DKYC whitelist. Uh, could you explain to me how this process is going to take place, uh, and will someone have to have a KYC AML for all transactions on the platforms or just specific coins? So uh, the KYC uh, AML portion, it's uh, it's so the reason why that's in it's uh, it's a it's a legal kind of factor uh, mainly because we are providing the front end, so um, uh, we we haven't confirmed on this, but it's quite likely that we will uh, only whitelist on our on our our site itself, and then the contract itself will remain completely decentralized. Uh, so this whitelist is different from the con the the token whitelist, which is uh, which we will have to implement, but uh, we will definitely remove it in in the future. Gotcha. So, will there <clears throat> will there be some sort of um, like maximum withdrawal limit, 
and then a follow-up to the KYC for a higher level, similar to how Binance and KuCoin does? Or will it just be a KYC entrance minimum? Uh, likely it will be withdrawal. And once again, this is only on our on our clients. So if other clients uh, implement it differently, they will do their own KYC. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, if you felt that a... If you felt that an account was participating in nefarious activities, um, how would Switchio go about handling that? And what would happen with uh, locked funds within the smart contracts? Uh, so currently, we don't. We are not doing uh, um, because we are not doing fiat transfers. Uh, it's kind of hard to to stop the the extraction at the end at the end of the day. So so what we do have is we are monitoring tools for um, suspicious activities, uh, high volume trades, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but that is done off chain and that's a more monitoring kind of basis uh, rather than um, uh, blacklisting on people on the exchange itself because I, I feel that uh, technically that's uh, not a very viable approach because uh, I mean the guy can just transfer to different address etc. So what you really want to do is to trace and to track uh, the person uh, as 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 he transfers his funds along along the decentralized exchange. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> you also plan to have a Qtum Dex as well, along with I guess some other platforms. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? All right. So. Um, the reason, so uh, the reason why we we are looking for we are working on Qtum and uh, we are even starting to look at Cardano, it's because um, it's because we 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 really want to enter the green fuel markets. Uh, right now, I uh, for Ethereum in in particular, there's a lot of decentralized protocols out there, uh, and there's also a lot of um, decentralized exchanges out there. Uh, that uh, that fulfilled the different niches already, the, 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 such as Kaibo, which has the instant swap, and then IDEX, which has the that more traditional kind of exchange view. Um, so so we don't we don't really want to compete with them at the start. What we want to do is to to uh, fill the market that it's it's currently uh, left. Basically, they're left starving for a place to to trade. Correct. Uh, the NEP5 tokens, the QTEM tokens, the QRC20 tokens, rather, and eventually the Cardano tokens. So uh, uh, our, our, our business strategy in general, it's really to to go for, um, to capture the market through this, uh, through this up, up and coming blockchains, and then later on, uh, bring it, scale it up to, to compete head to head with even the traditional centralized exchange exchanges and that's really what uh, all the money we are raising for are uh, going to be mainly used for um, um, to be able to to be able to market um, to our to to our audience you, you also plan to have a you said your your main functionality that you plan to eventually implement is the cross swap feature using the SWH token and one chain um, could you explain to me a little bit about that as well? Right. So, um, because we're doing multiple, these, uh, multiple exchanges and our token is going to be used as fees. I, I can talk about that later, but because we are going to, to, uh, be on multiple blockchains, uh, we need a way to interact, uh, across the different chains basically. So right now we have a few, we are doing, we are still in the R and D stage. But we have identified a few possibilities to to basically carry out this feature or to to do to do what we need to do. So uh, for one chain in particular, they they have a ring sort of signature. Uh, it's based on, I think it's based off the the Ethereum blockchain actually. Um, so that if we if we if we go for one chain, that will kind of allow us to to move our our base token, our native token SWH to to the one chain protocol, and then. Uh, all the different blockchains can use it as uh, as fees, correct? Um, the other way is to do the the is to implement our own cross up feature, which is um, the the standard atomic swap uh, hash, hash time lock uh, swaps, uh, 
and then we just move the our our native token from one blockchain to another uh, whenever you need to use it as fees. Um, <clears throat> your base pairings are they all going to be in SWH? How is that going to work? So the the base pairings will be for Dio in particular. It will be Neo, Gas, and SWH. Uh, and for the different blockchains, we'll basically use SWH, uh, the S SWH variant of the blockchain, uh, plus the base the base token of whatever the blockchain is. So for for Ethereum, it will be Ethers. For Qtum, it will be um, whatever. Yeah, it will be Qtum, I guess. Gotcha. And everyone in the chat, just remember that we will be doing a AMA section after that. So make sure you get your questions into the chat so we can just streamline right over. Um, <clears throat> what type of, uh, what's the standard transaction fee? Um, and will Switchio tokens benefit users in terms of reducing those fees? Right. So uh, the standard transaction fees, uh, it's 0 to 0 0.5 percent on the Maker side, so the maker side has no fees. There's no withdrawal fees. Uh, we are. Uh, I know certain decentralized exchanges do like a uh, tiered system, uh, where it's zero, where you, when if you trade more, you get less fees. But we are we are going with the model of uh, allowing us to customize the fees ourselves, uh, and, and that will really help us to to run marketing campaigns, to do zero fees kind of days, uh, and to also uh, customize fees for certain for certain uh, tokens such that we can do partnerships with the different uh, QRC or NEP5 uh, uh, token com companies. So uh, the SWH token itself uh, can be used in place of fees. Uh, sorry, sorry I'll, I'll take one step back. So the fees will actually be paid in terms of whatever you're trading in. So if you are, say you're trading NEO for gas uh, and you are paid, you're, you're offering gas for NEO, uh, the fees will be taken from gas, correct? So, uh, the uh, our our native token can be used in place of the gas that you that they will origin they will otherwise be deducted as fees, and uh, you get a fifty percent discount uh, of the value of what the fees was going to be. Um, yeah, so basically, it's very similar to the Binance model or the BNB model. For the, um, <clears throat> you said that the fees are used in whatever blockchain you're working with. Um, since you're going to have different, um, since you're going to have different blockchains that you're supporting, Qtum, ERC20, Neo, uh, will the will the back end for the for the UI be able to convert for whatever pairing I'm trading? So like if I'm selling. Um, some, th some sort of token in Ethereum, but I don't have any Ethereum in my wallet, uh, but I have the token, would it would it then take out the token? I think Binance and Qcoin do that now. I don't know if, I don't know many uh, DEX exchanges that do that though. I think they typically require you to have uh, that. Yeah. yeah, so that's a very interesting question. And uh, the answer to that is really that it's on a blockchain to blockchain basis. Uh, and, and what we think is the most efficient for us to implement. So uh, the reason why Ethereum generally, Ethereum DEXs generally do not do this, uh, it's because of uh, how each transaction is structured. So for Ethereum, basically you need gas to even, um, to even, in general, you need gas in order to even make the transaction. I do know there are some, uh, I, I, don't rem I don't recall which exact uh, DEX or which protocol does it, but uh, I do know through certain uh, workarounds, you can actually get uh, someone else to pay a guess, but it's a lot more tricky uh, for Ethereum. For um, Neo itself, because it's using the the UTXO unspent transaction um, outputs model of Bitcoin, it actually allows um, anybody to, or rather any account to pay for the transaction. Um, so that's something that we will definitely look at for uh, for Neo and. Uh, UTXO blockchains in general, uh, the, 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 the challenge for those uh, blockchains is just uh, the conversion rate. How do you, how do you, um, I, how do you track how much, uh, say, a new guess is worth compared to uh, the fees that you're supposed to pay? Um, yeah, but that's something we, we, we are definitely looking at. 
Gotcha. For your um for what is your what is your market cap um in terms of the pre sale and uh private or any private sale or public sale. So how much are you guys raising with your hard cap? So okay, the, our hard cap for okay, so for the public sale itself, it will be it's two hundred million uh, SWH tokens um being sold for three point two million USD. Uh, we are packing as USD because uh, well the markets fluctuate and we we don't really want um, we don't really want uh, I mean based on past experience I've seen. Uh, um, a lot of unhappiness happen when the prices of other tokens unrelated to uh, to the ICO token uh, change a lot, uh, and that's something we want to avoid. And also because uh, we are we are pretty set on the USD amount of money that we actually need to launch and to market our our DEX. Uh, so so it's the 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 pack rate it's zero point zero one six USD to to one SWH, which is, which will work out to the same uh, amount that, that I mentioned previously. Uh, in total, uh, the circulating supply is seventy five percent, so that's uh, seven hundred and fifty million SWH tokens, or twelve billion USD, I believe. Twelve million USD. Yes. And that seventy five percent includes the uh, strategic partners, correct? Correct. That includes uh, the partnerships and the marketing. Uh, there's some. There's basically some tokens reserved for partnerships and marketing, which. We haven't uh, spent all of it uh, yet, meaning that the circulating, circulating supply is actually going to be slightly lower than that. Gotcha. So post ICO, the market cap sh uh, should be around 12 point something. That's 75%. Uh, yeah. sure. And then the other 25% is uh, is vested for two years? Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Um, Uh, was there any specific bonuses given in the strategic partners that investors should be worried about? Um, so regarding bonuses, uh, uh, the max the maximum bonus we actually get was fifty percent, um, but this is for only a very small portion of of investors. And uh, the other thing is also, uh, although we call it as a bonus, uh, I, I I don't. I don't know if we, 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 we should have termed it, termed it as that in the first place because uh, a lot of, a lot of it it's uh, a lot of it's more as uh, payment for 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 example uh, uh, helping us market uh, giving us connections and and so um, yeah the the bonuses are not given out just 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 because right um, the the other thing is so our, our strategic investors are all vested really long term. Um, in fact, they were telling us to reduce the bonus. They were telling us to um, increase the market cap, which um, uh, it's actually worse for them in the long run. I mean, in the short run, sorry. Uh, but they, they really see us growing uh, for for the long term as a as a lot as a decentralized exchange platform. Cool. Um, your platform is going to be launching in about a month. Is that correct? That's the target. Uh, once again, uh, uh, I don't want to guarantee anything because we we really value the security of uh, of people using our platform or our users using our platform. Um, so this we only launch once we are one hundred percent sure that it's going to work as expected. It's going to scale as expected. It's going to um, uh, the UI UX is good enough. Uh, it passes our standards, and finally that. Uh, the contracts are all audited, and our bug bounty campaigns have been run for the for a good period of time. Gotcha. And you expect to be the first next on the market uh, for the new platform. Uh, currently, it looks to be the case. Awesome. And uh, when you launch, you plan to have all Neo assets uh, available. We will release them pretty quickly, but we will probably not release them all at once. Okay. So in the beginning, there's going to be a ramp up period. Um, Correct. But once you get up to once you get up to speed, then the listings of um, 
Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a good thing to get into. New listings uh, post ICO for Neo assets are they going to be available right away? You said I know in the future you're going to be doing custom. Uh, Correct. At, at what speed is your team expecting to launch post ICOs? So, so the the idea is, a, is of course um, immediate uh, immediate listing once uh, the, once trading is enabled on the token. Uh, uh, and that will happen soon soon after our exchange is launched and stable. Awesome. All right, well, I definitely appreciate you sitting down for the interview section. That was definitely a lot of information. I'm pretty happy from what I'm hearing. Um, not to give any advice, obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's hop into the que uh, questions in the chat. So make sure if you have any questions to get them uh, out of way there's only a few questions now so if we go through uh, the few questions that are here that'll be it really any other questions you'll have to address to the team in their telegram channel i have provided the link to your website and telegram uh, below uh, don wants to know uh, he wants to know why you believe that you are the most advanced nep5 decentralized exchange built for the neo platform so um uh, uh so there's there's a few things uh first of all we are the only new platform we are the only decks on the new platform on testnet currently i think so by default we are the most advanced but but i know that's avoiding the question so really uh we spend a lot of time um um engineering the user experience of our our dx and and uh, i don't know if jack wants to explain more about that uh, the second thing is also uh we are we are really trying to build our decks such that it accomplishes everything uh, that a traditional uh, exchange does, but a lot better. So, um, yeah, I would say it's 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 going to be a uh, it's going to be a different experience for people who are used to for people who are used to how DEXs currently operate uh, and 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 um how 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 they are how they are usually seen as inferior to to centralized exchanges gotcha yeah i'm just looking through your um demo right now seems to be your number one pride point in the white paper with ux design pride yourself having that experience dexes don't typically dexes aren't typically known for, for UI, uh, yeah, correct. Um, Don also says that there's no doubt that Ivan is a smart guy. What experience, what previous projects has Ivan worked on as a blockchain developer, which will ensure the success of the Switchio network project? So, I think the blockchain um, ecosystem in, on its own is uh, not that long. So, uh, I would say that I've launched. A bunch of products on 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 blockchain. It's not on um, any distributed ledger technology in general, and I don't think a lot of I don't think a lot of people who claim to, to have done that. Uh, yeah, I don't think there will be a lot of people who claim who have, to have done that. Um, but but besides that, um, I have launched uh, many businesses. I've exited um, from businesses before uh, startups, uh, and. Um, um, I I'm currently running. I'm, I mean, I'm the director of uh, multiple um, revenue generating um, companies. So so it's it's on my LinkedIn. Uh, I run Payboy, uh, Guest Sense, and um, I exited from Bambox previously. Um, so yeah, I've definitely. Uh, I think I've experienced uh, running a revenue generating startup um, and. Uh, technically, uh, I have to be very. I mean, I have to be candid here. Uh, a DEX is not it's not rocket science, and um, as long as uh, we get the, the user experience down, we get the order matching down, we get the, the security down, which which will be done through uh, through a lot of independent audits. Uh, I I really think we can put it off. Um, 
Someone wanted to clarify that you're raising 8.7 million the sale overall, and that the 12 million figure that you quoted has partnerships and strategic partners on top, or you're raising 3.2 the other partnerships. Um, aren't they the same? So the crowd sale is 3.2. Okay. Uh, the Dota, it's about uh, 9 million, I believe, uh, including bonuses, etc. But uh, based on the price, the market cap should be 12 million. Gotcha. Um, Tolis Valera says, can you talk about exchanges and transferability? Exchanges and transferability. I'm not sure what transferability means. Um, but if uh, in particular, it's a, it's an instant kind of thing. If you use your own wallet, you can immediately, um, you can immediately start trading, uh, without having to wait for deposit or confirmation time. Uh, and a withdrawal will be, uh, it's a separate pool action and that's done, uh, within two blocks basically. Gotcha. Um, a couple people want to talk, uh, have you talk about staking. Uh, one, one person said, what happened to the staking? Another said, when will they enable the staking mechanism? So I guess just tell me a little bit about the staking mechanism and I guess address right. the questions. Right. So staking is, is quite an interesting question. Uh, that was actually our original plan, uh, because we really liked the idea of sharing revenue and stuff like that. Um, but because, uh, we realized that, uh, I mean, uh, our legal team told us that this is going to take at least a couple of months, even up to half a year. Um, sorry, your, the battery is running out. I'm really sorry. The battery is running out. The battery is running out. The battery is running out. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, um, where was I? Uh, we're um, talking about the staking mechanism. Correct. Yes. So, so because that takes quite a while, and uh, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm looking at I'm looking at coin market cap, and every day that's like, I mean, uh, IDEX just put off ten million revenue. That's like a day, and that's like at zero point five percent fees. That's like five thousand a day or something. And then I was like, no, we are, we're not going to leave leave all that all that cash sitting on the table. So, so that's why we abandoned the staking idea for now. Uh, even though we actually wrote code for it, etc., we even had the UI done for it. Um, but uh, in the interest of uh, good business sense, we, we we paused that for for a while. So actually, I I, I really respect Next for sticking to their guns, and then because I I believe they are doing the staking model as well, and that's what's delaying them probably mainly. Um, but for now, uh, until we, for the foreseeable for foreseeable future, I, I would say that staking is off the table. Um, um, but it's something we really like, and uh, I believe it's it's I, I, I believe it's still possible uh, in the long term. Uh, but we we really want to get on the other. Uh, we really want to focus on getting on the various blockchains, etc., and and getting a working product out there first. Gotcha. Um, I know you can't really speak much about exchanges, uh, and. One of the big things that I always preach on my channel uh, for investors, uh, I'm obviously not a financial advisor, but I, I do, in my personal opinion, when I'm looking at uh, exchanges to target for investment, uh, I typically don't go with many because rival exchanges won't list a token. So you're really investing in the sustainability and the success of the actual platform itself uh, from an ROI perspective. Um, does your team, and this is from a question from the chat, does your team subscribe to the mentality that you should attempt to list on other exchanges to be able to bring brand awareness to your um, your project? Or does it believe that it doesn't need that and that it's only going to have its token exclusively put you in? Um, I believe every sort of uh, way to do, uh, to get publicity, it's a valid way and it's a good way. Uh, yeah, so so we we will look for listing uh, as part of uh, for marketing and publicity. Awesome. On our Yeah. Um, 
Dean Taylor says, can you give your current view on NEO and its use in the local market and how it compares to Ethereum? Uh, sorry, so what's the first part of the question? Um, he says, can you give your current view on NEO and its use in the local market and how it compares to Ethereum? Right, so uh, I don't know the relevance about the local market part because it's kind of a, a global blockchain. But with regards to NEO versus Ethereum, uh, NEO is definitely a lot less mature, but they have a really uh, strong community around it. Uh, I do feel that the community should, uh, should engage more with the core NEO development team, the core NEO code to, to bring the, the ecosystem in general uh, uh, up to, uh, I mean, to improve the, the NEO blockchain far in a, I mean, more rapidly. Um, so I, I, I heard recently that there's some, there's some concerns about the NEO blockchain. Um, and I, I do understand that NEO in general is a bit harder to develop, uh, not, not in particular thought to, to uh, anyone or anything in, 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 in particular, but more because of the paradigm it uses. For, uh, I mentioned earlier about the UTXO model and stuff like that. So you really need to, to be a bit creative in how you do things and you need to, to really understand how, how, the, the whole thing, how, how the whole thing works. You can't just look at, say, you can't just look at uh, best practices and then uh, copy code and then uh, it's like very, it, it, it looks like very standard code and then, and then it works. For, for, for Neo, it doesn't really work like that. You have to understand how the whole blockchain works, how, how the transactions are, how the transactions interact with each other. So I think that's uh, one of the challenges that a lot of uh, companies working on the Neo blockchain phases. Uh, um, in terms of maturity, uh, I, I'm pretty certain it will, it will, uh, you'll get there eventually. Yeah. What was your, uh, speaking of which, what was your response to the FUD that was coming out about Neo? Uh, so. I think it, a lot of it is propagated by people who don't really understand how, how it works. Um, so uh, it's, it wasn't a very critical uh, issue, I feel. Uh, yeah, and, and I think it will be solved. Uh, the more, I think the more critical issues for Neo, it's that it needs, yeah, like, like I mentioned earlier, it needs a lot more core development uh, efforts for the community, yeah. Like in Ethereum, that's a lot of, if you go to the GitHub, there's lots of people commenting on proposals or trying to push forward certain things. On Neo, that is not so much. The, the community is more focused around the tooling, the, 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 the uh, what do you say? Uh, yeah, basically the, it's, a, it's around, it's the ecosystem surrounding Neo rather than, rather than, the, the core new code, the core new blockchain that's being developed. Yeah, my understanding is that there's a lot of third party devs instead of like a core developer. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to have that perspective, especially we don't have many people from that are working with Neo products on. I mean, we have them obviously, uh, but there's just so many more ICOs happening on Ethereum right now. And I think that's just uh, really because Neo is still in its early. Uh, early phase in terms of how many projects. I also think Neo is really shooting for more quality projects right now instead of just a kind of a takes all approach, which is the battle yeah. royale that happens on Ethereum currently. Yeah, um, definitely. The, also, can we look our uh, can we lock our Switchio tokens so early contributors get their staking rewards backwards? But. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand it. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand the question, but maybe uh, you'll understand it better. Um, Franz De Han asked if if they're able to lock their Switchio tokens, so early contributors can get their staking reward. I don't know too much about your staking model. It wasn't really. Yeah. So previously, we were doing. Uh, we we proposed. Uh, a model where you stick the tokens and then every 23 hours you get the revenue split but 
uh, we, we are not going to launch with that. So, so if you're buying SWH tokens, your tokens are going to be used for fee discounts uh, and not staking, uh, at least at the start. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of a weird question. I think that you're going to be aiming to list most NEO uh, asset tokens, but someone specifically wanted to know if you planned on launching Apex on your new exchange. They feel that that would be an awesome collaboration to coincide with your um, I'm talking to the, I mean, I, I had a short chat with the Apex uh, CEO, uh, so that's definitely a possibility. Uh, Splash112 said, since staking has been taken out, how will the team allocate fees from the platform? Fees for the platform. That's our revenue. That's why we are doing this. Yeah. yeah. I, his question was, since you're since you're not starting with staking from the get-go, I guess will that affect fee? Uh, yeah. Actually, it allows us to be a lot more flexible in terms of marketing. So, so that's a plus point. Uh, we can even drop the fees to zero during our initial launch to to promote to promote it. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that wraps up everything. A little bit on the short side of the hour, but uh, people like people like shorts anyway. Uh, here's another question coming in. Aside from 50% fees, do you intend to introduce staking in the future? I think the answer is yes. Correct. Um, we hope to introduce it, but uh, I, I don't buy the token assuming that that will happen. That That's, that's our stand currently. Gotcha. So the idea is still up in the air. Yes. All right. Well, I do appreciate uh, you guys coming on. Unfortunately, we weren't we weren't able to uh, get uh, Henry or Jack on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just want to give you guys just a, a brief moment uh, to kind of give any closing statements or closing thoughts uh, that you might have, uh, Ivan. All right. So for people interested to try out our exchange. So, uh, so our whitelist is kind of closed, and uh, the ICO will probably be it's it's mostly oversubscribed. But for people looking to trade NP5 tokens, new or guests on our DEX, uh, do check do follow us uh, on our CTO announcement chat because sometime next week uh, we'll open up um, we'll probably open up our test net to to public uh, testing. So so we have this faucet system where where you can. Uh, get free tokens on testnet and then you can uh, play trading with each other uh, do try it out give us comments if you think uh, what we say is crap and our ui ux is not good enough let us know yeah awesome well i appreciate you coming on um someone says let him show a short demo uh if you don't mind after after i let you guys go i'll i'm gonna hop on your demo real quick and just take a look at it yeah sure so uh the demo is there. Uh, we, we there's some cleanups you want to do. Uh, I think most people can't use the demo because they don't have any tokens. So so we are, we are, we, that's why we have this faucet to basically distribute tokens to the public so that they can actually test it. If not, you're just looking at the. Uh, yeah, it's more of a yeah. It's, it's more of a mock up with uh, inter yeah. interactive interactability. But I think yeah. it's good enough. Um, yeah. especially since your main selling point is, uh, is UI anyway. Um, yeah. it gives us a good look of what we're going to be looking for. Yeah. All right. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, it's definitely been fun. And if you're watching this at a future point, uh, I guess, enjoy. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys, that was Switchio network. <clears throat> I'm going to bring up their demo real quick. Um, just to take a brief look at it, so we'll hop over to the scene. This is the Switchio Exchange. It's um, it kind of has a some uh, like the left the t the upper left hand side reminds me slightly of Radar Relay, uh, just without those stupid uh, wrappers <laughs> that they do. I have no idea why Radar Relay ever did that. By the way, probably like I when I saw Radar Relay's UI or whatever, I was like, okay. Pretty bad because no reason for me to have to worry about any of these wrappers. You can just do it from the back end. They, I think that's one of the reasons why they didn't 
that well. High dex, obviously, very well. I think this is pretty uh, straightforward. Buy or sell gas. Um, example of if I was doing gas, let's switch over to something. Buy SWH, sell as price, the quantity, the total. You can buy wallet balance. This is very similar to Bitfin down here. Here it has buy and sell orders. You're clicking on it. Like it sets it exactly to that. Something that I'd look forward to seeing if be like that. I think Qcoin does it best, honestly, in my opinion, where if I click on this, that'll be the price that it puts up. If I click on this, that'll be the end. Uh, and it sets them each individually. They do have a percentage of how much you're looking to sell. It's very similar to Qcoin and Finance as well. Uh, it looks like Charts are powered by TradingView, which is cool. It has a transaction list down here. It has a trade history. I don't see a def, um, def chart, which is, in my opinion, always nice, but it might not matter. Up here, you can look at your different wallets and things about neighbor. It has Qtum, you know, uh, pretty standard. I think it looks sleek enough. I think there could definitely be room for improvement, but it's a very early beta. Uh, I look forward to see what it looks like comes out but I think it's it's a good start for sure especially for a product that's going to be launching in next month um, by the way full transparency I am partaking which you uh, there in front of my nation but I did want to make your voice is lagging slightly or breaking up your mouth microphone keeps dipping volume what about now <clears throat> testing, testing, testing the lag of my microphone. Is this thing on? How's that sound, guys? My keeps breaking up. All good. Well, Dilwar Hassan says it's all good. Okay, we're all good here. Give me a, uh, give me a hell yeah if we're all good. No hell yeah. Can we still purchase tokens? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It can be 60 seconds into talking, but seems better. How do you rate Switchio now out of 10? Um, I actually gave it a rating. Gave it a rating before we came on. All right. Yeah, I gave it a rating before we came on. Let me just sort this. Okay. Scripts now. All right, let's come over here and look at the rating sheet. So, not financial advice, not financial advisor, just my personal opinion. I did give Switchio, uh, or the spreadsheet gave Switchio a 94. I have reviewed their white paper and they are ready. Um, so I gave them a huge impact on the space, and the reason being is because they're going to be the first Neo Dex exchange on the market. They're also going to be the first for Qtum, uh and the first for other platforms. All these other uh, Neo, all these other exchanges are specifically targeting Neo. Um, so I think that it's really big that not only will they be the first Neo platform coming out, but they'll also be the first uh, Qtum. So that gives me a huge because there's no one else in the space. So obviously people are thirsting. Excuse me for that. Now, I will say that you can easily trade on Qcoin or Binance for your NEO assets, but you have to wait for those platforms to be able to list. Right now, there's no way for me to sell um, any NEO assets currently post ICO. So they're going to be kind of like the how ED was. It's, it's, it's a necessity, uh, and they're going to be starting with their own token. So it's obviously going to be. Uh, I, I do foresee heavy volume on coins in the initial phases before getting listed on Qcoin. Some coins don't even ever get listed um, or any any uh, exchange for that matter. So uh, in, in terms of impact of the space, I think it's big. I think as more Neo platforms come out, this will obviously get downgraded down to average uh, because we can look at the space now in Ethereum. We have IDEX, Radar Relay, Ether Delta, and others. Uh, 
uh, in terms of the Dexic space. So the, the space is getting a little flooded and it's really getting dominated by IDEX at the moment because IDEX is focusing on usability, which is ironic because we just had an entire AMA dedicated to what Switchio excels at, which in their opinion is, is usability. So for the longest time, people had, um, people had Ether Delta and it was just a shit ass project. Very bad. Uh, usability was terrible. People were making mistakes. I lost two grand on Ether Delta in my early days of um, getting into crypto, uh, or at least uh, trading ICOs and things. Uh, so I think that without any real leader in the space, especially for Qtum, I think Switchy has really taken the cake. So I'm giving a huge impact on the space. And I think the other thing is that they're a beta ready product. They're targeting to be launching next month. Um, so it correlates with their ICO. So that's always a bonus right there. Uh, I have their hard cap at 8.7 million. It really only goes up to 12 million after you take into the partnerships or whatever, which they're very transparent about. And I think even at 12 million deal in my personal opinion. The one thing I think that the team lacks is VIP level experience. But even as the founder said uh, during his AMA, how much VIP level experience do you need? Dex, he's absolutely right. Dex is in terms of code complexity or is not that. So in terms of how much they're asking for uh, and in terms of having a beta ready project, this really isn't a, a non-issue to me. Um, the team still has experience. It's just not VIP level. So I'm not really going to hold it against them too much, but it is factored into now, In terms of the advisors, they did get full points on the advisor bonus. Roger Lim is an advisor for this company. He's the one who turned me on to the project. So anytime Roger Lim associated with some, something, I just put a dick in my mouth and go with it. Uh, because Roger has just supported many different projects. I have a list of all of them here, which are self key, the key, Fortuna, Coin5, Blue Cell, Q Link. He's also behind Zero Chain, Homo Coin, J8, all of which are fantastic projects, all of which uh, so far have done pretty well. Not financial advice, not financial advisor, but as you know, I'm a very big fan of Roger's work. I just set this to partial since they are only selling a portion of the partial sale uh, and all of Obviously, with a working product, in my opinion, it does pass the Howie test and does the prototype, but I'm not an expert in legal place, so I can't really tell you yes or no, and this column will bye by anyway. But considering they do have a working product or pretty much working. So uh, my final grade for them was a 94. I think at worst, you're looking at um, an 88, but in my opinion, I'm going huge uh, and as i said i'm putting my mouth is uh, and i will be tempting project so that being said not financial advice not a financial advisor uh switchy or burning tokens oh, better now did you hear the Sephirium hack everyone is glued to your spreadsheet <laughs> yeah probably um yeah i talked about this in my ama earlier a, a lot of people were asking me for the spreadsheet if I bring the spreadsheet back, it's going to be in a different form. It's not going to have uh, like this ICO registration information. It's really going to be focused really on the project. I don't want these. Uh, I don't want these spreadsheets to be like for ICO purposes. I think ICOs are dying, so it's pointless. I mean, I'm still evaluating using the spreadsheet because um, there's a lot of access still happening in the private sales, so it's relevant. But I think it's unfair, like I said, to the people who are out there. So if I put out anything, it's going to be a refactored version of the sheet, which is still going to have the same layout, same stuff, but it's really just going to focus on like what I look for um, when I'm doing a soft review, which is the impact on the space, uh, the beta progress, the valuation, and the team and advisors. All this other stuff is kind of filler that's really the ICO, and I don't really want to be part of that. But at the same time, people want it, so we'll see. Uh, but for now, I think we're doing a Good job handling those expectations. So, yeah, <clears throat> I think Switchio is awesome. Uh, I actually will be using the platform myself uh, because obviously there's no option for Neo assets right now, and especially no options for Qtum. I, I don't even think I've heard of anyone that approaching Qtum and cross chain. So, I definitely appreciate Switchio coming on. Um, I think it's an exciting project, and I look forward to seeing what the final product looks like. Because uh, I think they have a first mover's advantage and opportunity to uh, really make something magical. Sorry, can you comment on the hack, Maddie? What hack? I don't know. <laughs> your, your spreadsheet is so much better and informative than other spreadsheets. I miss studying. I 
I actually am colorblind. Just to put that out there. Typhurium. Is that related to this? I, I'm not, I haven't heard of this. Search on Twitter for hashtag Typhurium. Maddie, I forgot to ask them how they will deal with liquidity issues. I think at this point in the game, all uh, DEXs have liquidity issues. IDEX seems to be having, uh, doesn't seem to have as much liquidity issues as other. Um, but I think that out of necessity or being able to trade tokens between, um, between exchange listing and ICO, I think that they won't have liquidity issues on that end. And considering IDEX is solving the liquidity issues with usability, uh, it seems that they're on the right track. So their main selling point was um, usability. It seems that IDEX is using their usability as a, as a positive to deal with the liquidity issue. So it seems that they've uh, implemented a solution to the problem. So I think, uh, I think Switchio is heading in the right direction. It's all about the marketing, right? I don't even think... Um, I don't even think DEX exchanges really need marketing, to be honest. Um, there's just a necessity for them. Uh, people want to be able to trade their coins right after the ICO. Um, they don't want to have to wait a month or two to get listed on Qcoin or Binance. They don't want to have to be uh, pretty much held hostage by the centralized exchanges of what gets listed and what doesn't, especially because their speed in which they listings are, um, can be slow at times. So people still want to use DEXs um so marketing only matters when things aren't a necessity and dexes are a necessity um so i don't think marketing matters in space, especially when there's zero exchange platforms for dexes for neo or dex tokens are gold dust That's a scam. I fear him. They say they got hacked, but is that real? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I've never, uh, I, if I heard of Cypherium, it was a quick pass for me. Look at this guy. Just a list of nice projects. Cypherium number three. They have. If you really want the juicy details, go to Telegram and then watch how people freak out. Bam. Uh, someone gotten refunded a few hours ago, according either an exit scam in which case these guys will never work in the industry again or a hack money was stolen because they're amateur in which case these guys will never work again <laughs> what protection does your crypto bank have against hacking or thefts all recent factors yeah daddy they and look at those screenshots those screen I'm saying it. Guide me in the right direction, friends. How Switchio token will be used? It's like Binance coin, utility coin. Yeah, so it's like 50%. What's going on? We have experienced a security breach while processing some of the refund requests. And our ethers got stolen. They've been transferred. 
It doesn't have an admin tag on it. Yeah, so like normally, see how right here it says Noah admin? Like these don't have an admin tag. I don't know, we'll have to let that play out. Maddie, Bitcoin miners are using more electricity in Iceland than the population of Iceland. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty da it's pretty bad. <laughs> I think you needed voice to activate. It's too low on your mic, Maddie. I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, there's normally not a problem. Is it still got is this, is, there, is there still an issue? Testing, testing. I don't think there's still an issue. Is there anyone else having issues with the, it's fine for me? Yeah, I think it's on your end name. I did hear about the 600 mining rigs getting sold. Everyone else is fine, right? The audio is fine for everyone else. Clarify. Oh, I, I did see it drop off there for a second. Okay, so when I move the mic is the problem. That's what's happening. It should be fine now. Like, I'm not moving it right now. Picking me up and everything. Audio is good. All right, thanks, Tom. I'll stick around if you guys don't mind me eating my dinner. Actually, I've been sitting here for about an hour. I can answer questions or I might have to get a water at some point. you have any projects on the lookout? Um, so I was talking about, I was talking about projects, my AMA today, go over what's on the rise. All right. So obviously no one's getting into next, uh, switch is over. Hyper block is, I think over or will be over. I'm not sure. I'm big on hyper blocks. For the mid to long term. Um, Zebi, obviously, no one's getting into that. Autonomy, no one's getting into Sentinel Chain, no one's getting into Dav seemed pretty nice, but I'm not going into that personally. I'll just put still things. Open platform, I'm probably passing on, but there's opportunity there. Banka and card stack, there's opportunity. Obviously, right now, as I explained earlier, I'm moving. Uh, session. Um, I'm looking to double up my investments in the top projects right now, uh, and I'm not looking to have my tokens held up for too. Long. That's why I'm not expanding. Normally, I would expand and diversify, uh, but in my opinion, I'd much rather like double up at the top and go low down here. Endor, I'm still floating around at the moment. It's getting an 86. Uh, someone, I think someone. Oh no, Endor, I'm not floating. Eden chain. I, someone offered me some chain. They also wanted to set up a AMA. I'm probably going to pass on it, but I will still do the AMA. Mainly because of this leadership is a no. They had two points for the team. Uh, because they're even though they're 24 million, that's a really good price. Um, I wasn't really happy about. That. I'm personally passing, but I will be having them on for an AMA probably Thursday or Friday, maybe Tuesday or third or Wednesday. I need to talk with the person about that. Video coins out there, I think it's definitely a sleeper, even though it's only getting an 83. Jet 8 potential sleeper, Roger Lim project. I'm not personally uh, interested, and everything else is waiting on. IOTEX, I think, server codex protocol is waiting. So. 
Ocean Protocol. I think that's another one. There's some weird stuff going on with lockups with that, so. <clears throat> uh, Nuggets is getting a 76. I think that there's an AMA. I, I think, did I already do the AMA with Nuggets? I have to look at the calendar. That's bad. No, Nuggets is this Saturday at 12 p.m. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. Is Cloud Mula? Yeah, Cloud Mula at 5 p.m. tomorrow Eastern Standard Time. I'll have to double check that time and get back to you guys. Um, Cloud Mula is like a Unity plugin, uh, cryptocurrency payment rail, um, which is an exciting project. I'm just personally not. Thoughts on Elastos? I don't have any at the moment. Are there any ICOs that you recommend that still have a pre-sale left? You'd have to go check on them individually. This is one of the reasons I don't really focus on ICOs anymore because they, by the time they even get to the public, they're sold. Just got in the card stack today. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's still projects out there, right? Like, the card stack's still out there. I'm sure Bank is, DAV. What about Coinvest? Uh, Coinvest I was originally hype on. Uh, but when I changed my stance on exchanges, I passed on it. How did autonomy score on your sheet? It got a 90. XM Chain also got a good score, but I'm pretty sure they're over. Ocean is the one with the one and a half year lockup. Yep. Passed on Cloud Mola. I think that's perfectly fine. I passed on it too. Definitely a, a project that's an opportunity there. Cloud Mola is currently getting a 79. Look at it real quick. I think it's a huge idea in terms of being one of the first proprietary cryptocurrency payment rails in the Unity system. The Unity is a big technology for developers. One of the problems I had when it was an 180 day beta and 30 million I thought was a little high, so I gave it an above average here on the comparison. Team was good, advisors were good, nothing uh, out of the ordinary with the advisors though in terms of blockchain, everything else uh, looked up. So the pain points was that they were they were asking for a little bit too much money and they had 180 day beta. Um, I'm not a fan. You could argue the score's a little lower because it's probably a six. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor, not a representation of any of the teams. Make sure you make your do your own due diligence. Understand the SEC has labeled securities and uh, blockchain technologies as high risk investment space. Careful what you do. What's your thought on Apex? I'm ready, bro. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm I invested in Apex. Um, I think it's. Uh, I was a little unhappy of how they rolled out that announcement, but they definitely made good on it and pretty exciting. Have you seen STK has postponed the milestone on the roadmap? Uh, it's not super uncommon for milestones to get postponed. People want to make sure they're getting it right. Um, the milestones are really just an estimate. Uh, if anything, they probably should have done it in quarters. If they didn't, I'd have to look back at the STK roadmap. I'd need a little bit more information really to start slamming them, but... I think uh, I think in the end, STK is positioned organizationally to be uh, to be successful. So I look forward to that. I did sell my STK, uh, but I look forward to getting back in at a lower price. Let's see here, someone asked me about Kairos. I feel like Kairos is that project. Here it is, 84. I felt like it was an above average idea. Or, sorry, not idea, but impact on the space. Beta ready product. Was asking for a little bit too much money at 30 million. The idea. Great. I had an advisor, but. Oh, that is a pretty large delay. What did they specifically delay? Why? But I'd be more. Have you checked out Alchemist? No, I haven't. Fusex is going to be a beast Korean tenant. Awesome. 
All right, guys. Uh, any other questions before I dip out? Yeah, there are a lot of them, especially in this market. There are diamond dozen. <laughs> Market's pretty shit at the moment. Um, so you could probably find anything. Maddie, do you think we are pissing away our Ethereum and Neo on ICOs? No, I mean, if anything, I'm right there at the urinal next to you, pissing along. <laughs> That's what that's what Neo and Ethereum are for. Good night, Siva. Have a good night, friends. Thanks for coming out. Make sure to smash up that like button, boys. <laughs> Let's piss together. Only if you're holding it, Matt. Thoughts on Patreon? I ne never heard of it. Never rated. Thoughts on Haven? I didn't rate Haven because I found Haven like literally twelve hours after I found out Ian children on his channel or whatever so by the time i even got to it it had like a ridiculous people in it Twenty thousand people different night it looked like a good project though. i was excited about it i would say like 88 plus if i was to grade it definitely up there also uh ico differ um messaged me about partnering with them I told them I'm not doing any partnering at the moment. But. This is that. I can't remember. There it is. Crypto differ. So I, I feel like uh, crypto differ definitely separates themselves from the pact. Um, they have this medium here that they do these really detailed like breakdowns of everything from the top ICO experts. Uh, and it doesn't seem like they're charging anything yet. So I think that's pretty awesome. So I told them that I would give them some of my picks for them to put on their thing. Uh, the main reason I was upset with those types of people was because like top seven ICO was like charging for free information. So I thought that was all right, guys. I think I'm gonna cut it there. Eden Chain, I talked about that earlier, and in the AMA. All right, guys. I appreciate everyone coming out. Make sure you smash those like buttons up. Uh, hit the sub button if you like the content. Want to come back? Uh, Ian passed on Sweet Bridge. He said no. Yeah, I know. He made it, he made a 180 on Sweet Bridge. Um. I hope everyone enjoyed the content for Switchio Network, enjoyed the, the mock-up they had. Uh, appreciate everyone coming out for the AMAs as always, and I look forward to catching you guys on the flip.